Romans chapter 92. I appreciate the opportunity to be here. I was thinking, as the boys sang, there's at least three generations of that family that sang, preached, and pastored. May go back further than that, I don't know. But it just pays to serve God. If you really serve the Lord, your kids have a better chance of going to heaven. Yes, and those right. who think uh, if you don't serve the Lord, they need to see the influence of your life and be able to realize that there's something real about Christ. Yes. So they see the change in the way you live that life. Very important tonight to know the Lord. We're not going to preach to the unsaved. We're going to preach to the church tonight for the will of the Lord. One of our favorite scriptures, 92nd Psalm. We'll just start reading down at verse 8. But thou, Lord, are most high forevermore. For lo, thine enemies, O Lord, for lo, thine enemies shall perish. All the workers of iniquity shall be scattered. But my horn shall be exalted, or shall thou exalt like the horn of a unicorn. I shall be anointed with fresh oil. Mine eyes also shall see my desire on mine enemies, and mine ears shall hear my de desire of the wicked that rise up against me. Verse 10 has got something in it that uh, right at the end of, the, of that piece of scripture. David said this with confidence. There wasn't any hesitation about him whatsoever. But he said, I shall be anointed with fresh oil. Let's have a word of prayer if we would tonight. Father, in the name of the Lord, we just come boldly before the throne of grace this evening. We thank you for the opportunity one more time to stand behind the pulpit, to preach the word of God. And I pray may the Holy Ghost come, quicken our body, quicken our minds, quicken our spirit, and enable us to be a vessel for the Lord for a moment. But God also will anoint the minds and the hearts of all of us gathered here. There's an unsaved person here. May the Holy Spirit reach out to them with convicting power to draw them unto Christ tonight. The Lord, that you can be set free from the power of sin. If there be a child of God here tonight, that it's been a long time, they've had the blessings of the Lord really upon their life the way they needed it, may they be able to come tonight and receive from the hand of the Master the fresh oil of God. We praise you. Thank you for your blessing. Ask your grace right now in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 There's three men, three preachers in my life. I had the opportunity to meet two of them uh, one time personally, and the other man I never got to meet in person. But those three men have played a great part in my life. As I listened to their ministry, and listened to their preaching by radio, by tapes, however I could get it. The first one was an old preacher by the name of Mays Jackson. Brother Mays used to come on at 5 o'clock in the morning. I would get up even when I was laid off from work in construction, at 5 o'clock in the morning to listen to the old man of God. He had a radio program on WEMM in the Huntington. It would come on. It was a truck driver special. was the name of the, the program. And it would come on. You'd hear those 18 wheelers just working through the gears. Uh, then he would come on and say, this is Brother Mays uh, of the truck driver special. Now that old man of God was a missionary Baptist or some type of a Baptist that definitely believed in eternal security. In other words, he believed once you got saved, it didn't matter what would happen in your life that you were going to go to heaven. One of the other men of God that I listened to was an old man by the name of D.P. Denton. Very few of you folks would probably know of D.P. Denton. He was, was a, a Methodist connection. That was a, a very, very strict and conservative holiness preacher. Right? You had, had just a hair out of place. Uh, her shirt sleeve, wrong leg for a woman that had on a dress that wasn't just right. You weren't going to make it at all. But that old man of God would preach the word of God under the power and the anointing of the spirit of the Lord. Uh, the third man that's made a great difference in my life was a man by the name of Burke Clendenin. Burke Clendenin was Assembly of God preacher. I got the opportunity to meet him one time. That man of God preached uh, probably one of the smartest, probably the smartest preacher uh, that I've ever listened to in my life. He could bring more out in a message uh, 
than anybody else that seemed like could ever got from that message. Uh, but even though we've got an eternal security Baptist uh, and a super conservative holiness preacher uh, and an assembly of God Pentecostal preacher, uh, all of those men had one thing in common uh, that they yeah. preached uh, in their theology that was a need of the church. Uh, and it was the power of the Holy Spirit uh, yeah. that worked within the life of every child of God uh, to accomplish what God uh, would have himself to accomplish. Uh, now, the study and uh, the ordination when I was ordained uh, by the Church of Christ in Christian Union, uh, I had to study a lot of different denominations. Uh, and somewhere in the theology of every denomination, there's that teaching uh, that you get saved, uh, then you come to a place uh, that you yield yourself totally to God, and God will fill uh, that vessel with the power of the Spirit of the living God. Uh, but somewhere along the line, uh, in between those events, uh, there's got to be a coming back. Uh, even after you've been saved, uh, even after you've been filled, uh, once in a while, they're getting filled with a fresh oil of God that you can go on and do with that life what God would have you do. Whenever David is speaking about that anointing of the Holy Spirit or that anointing of the fresh oil, he's referencing really to the Holy Ghost, uh, what God's going to do for him. Uh, to help him to get through. If he's going to see his desire on his enemy, if he's going to come out on top, uh, there's got to be more power than just the power of the sword uh, and the power of the shield. Uh, there's got to be the power of God on his side. Uh, and folks, after preaching, uh, I suppose for almost 36 years now, I'll have to say the greatest need that I have uh, and the greatest need the church has uh, it's a fresh visitation uh, by the Holy Spirit. Uh, yeah. We need the Spirit of the living God to come back one more time uh, and to fill our cup until it flows over. Then will the devil be defeated. Uh, then will souls be set free. Then will folks come out of the closet uh, and quit being afraid uh, to be children of God. But they'll stand upright, have the victory in their soul, uh, and not be ashamed of it. Seems like half the Christian is ashamed of being a child of God. Oh, Amen. Amen. We need the fresh oil. Now, the fresh oil tonight will do three or four things. I'm going to give it to you. Things that it did for David and things it will do for you and I. First of all, the fresh oil, anointing of the Holy Spirit, is the oil for service. It's the oil for service. If you read the life of David, and I've always loved David's life, you'll read about a man that was anointed three different times. Yeah. With the oil, whenever God said that I'm going to have another same king other than Saul, he spoke to Samuel and he said, Now, won't you quit mourning for, for Saul? I'm done with him. He's rebelled against me and against the will of God. So he sent David. He said, Fill up the horn and go. He's filling it up with the oil, which is symbolic of the power of the Holy Spirit. He went to the house of Jesse, and when he got to the house of Jesse, he said, let all of your sons pass before me. Everyone went before him. One of them, probably six foot five, uh, shoulders as broad as an axe handle, uh, had arms on him, looked like a lumberjack. Uh, that surely, Samuel thought, would be the man God would call to be king. Uh, but God never called that one. He said, let him pass by. When all the boys had passed by, all of a sudden, Samuel looked at Jesse and he said, have you got no more boys? Uh, he said, I've got one. Uh, doesn't matter too much. He's up there taking care of the sheep. Uh, the one taking care of the sheep is the one uh, that's the lowest in the family. Yeah, that uh, being a shepherd went to that one. Uh, he said, we'll not sit down until he's come. Uh, yeah. When he came in, God spoke to him. Uh, yeah. And he yeah. said, that's the one. Uh, right. He anointed him yeah. with the oil. Uh, now it's a long time before he goes to the throne uh, to be king over Israel. Uh, but in that time, he comes in contact with a lion uh, that comes to steal one of the lambs. Uh, and he rose up, uh, not in the power of the flesh, uh, but the power of the spirit. Uh, and he slew the lion. Later on a bear came to do the same thing and the Spirit of God came upon him and the same thing happened. Later on daddy sent him down to the valley where Philistines are camped against God's people and he heard as Goliath came out and roared against the people of God. My looked around and thought surely so 
some of the champions of God will go down and slay that giant. But none moved. Saul's shaking in his tent. He's not about to fight. But David recalled that that day that something yeah. came upon him when he was anointed with the oil from on high. Yeah. And thank God he went down to the valley and with one rock and a sling, he put the devil right on his face. I'm telling you, folks, there's power. Whenever David became king over Judah, they anointed him again. He's got to have a fresh anointing to take the fresh duty that's upon his life. He's got to have wisdom. He's got to have ability. And he had an example set before him of Saul of what happens to the man that doesn't keep the fresh oil for him. Huh? Saul started out with the oil. Huh? Saul prophesied with the prophets. Huh? Yeah. The power of God rested on him. Huh? But he came to a place. He said, I've got enough now to do me the rest of my life. Huh? And I don't need any more of what God's got. Huh? And David recognized the failure was a failure yeah. to get the oil. Huh? So when he's going to go to be king of Judah, those men of Judah anointed him as king. Huh? When he became king over all Israel. They anointed him to be king. And I tell you folks, it's never changed down to the day in which you and I live. If we're going to serve God, if we're going to have victory, we've got to keep the oil of the Holy Spirit. That early church was told by the Lord Jesus Christ in the first chapter, he said, don't plant a church, don't take an offering until that comes upon you, the promise of the Father. Just get in that upper room and wait. The second yeah. chapter of the book of Acts, the Holy Ghost came. And when the Holy Ghost came, Peter stood up and preached a very simple sermon. I tell you, there wasn't nothing profound about it. Yeah. Uh, amen. The kids could have got out of the cookie jar. It was so simple. Uh, but the power of the Holy Ghost was upon him where he'd been filled uh, with the Spirit of God. And because of that, 3,000 people got saved amen. that day. Uh, third chapter of the book of Acts. Uh, Peter and John are going into the temple. Uh, when a, a man lame from his mother's womb yeah. shook that old tin cup at him, uh, they you got any alms for a crippled man. Uh, they started to walk past, and no doubt, they nudged one another and said, Hey, Pete, what did we get back there in the upper room the other day? Yeah, yeah. We got something uh, that came from heaven to do Everybody things that man can't do. Right? Yeah. So they turned around and looked at him. Uh, yeah. And to paraphrase it in the Campbell edition, uh, we don't have what you want, but we got what you need. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And the name of the Lord Jesus Christ rise up yeah. and walk. Uh, yeah. And the man leaped up and he walked. Uh, because of that in the fourth chapter of the book of Acts, uh, they're persecuted, they're beaten, uh, and they're sent back to their assembly. Don't no, not to preach in that name anymore. Uh, but my goodness, when they got back there, they got called a prayer meeting and said, let's pray. Uh, and they never said, God, hide us from the devil. Uh, hide us from the enemy. But they said, oh God, give us boldness uh, that we may preach in the name uh, of the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, and when they said that, the word of God said they were all filled again uh, with the fresh oil came from heaven. Uh, and they went out, turned the world upside down with 5,000 saved that day. What are you talking about? They weren't counting on yesterday's oil, what they had yesterday, but they said, God, have something fresh yeah. the in the life. Yeah. Yeah. You've got to have this power of the Holy Spirit. And it's not so you can shout. Uh, it's not so you can act more spiritual than anybody else in the church. I've seen a lot of people shout just because they didn't want everybody to know this backslid. <laughs> I've seen people come in and put on an awful stack to show how spiritual they were and couldn't make it back to church for six more weeks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that pretty well is a telltale sign of it when you do that. But my goodness, folks, it's so that you can stand up and be counted in the spot that yeah. God wants you to fill. So you can be faithful to God. So you don't have to be running and hiding from the devil. If there's nobody around to pray for you, you can pray for yourself. If there's nobody around to back you up, thank God the Holy Ghost has got your back. And you can do what God would have you to do with that. Amen. That phrase old David knew it was for service that he could fulfill the will and the purpose of God. But it is also for joy and service. If you were, uh, were to turn to Psalms 45, verse 7, said that God anointed it with the oil of gladness. Yeah. God anointed him with oil of gladness. You know, I've never seen anybody yet that was a miserable Christian that ever got anybody saved. Amen. I passed an old man one time, one of the most miserable, miserable men that I ever seen. 
I mean, his shirt sleeves came right down to the right place. He kept the top button buttoned on it. He considered himself the top of the list in the holiness movement. But I remember one morning after preaching about revival of that church that I was pastoring, of which he was part, he went out through the doors of that church. He said, Preacher, I'll tell you when we'll have revival. It's when we get the pantsuits off these women. <laughs> now his wife didn't wear a pantsuit and she acted pretty miserable. I would too if I lived with her. <laughs> That's exactly what he said. But you know it got nothing to do with that. Right. There's something about serving God and walking with God and knowing That's God exactly right. and living for God and the Holy Spirit coming. I've never seen anybody yet that lived full of the Holy Spirit. That was a downcast, down, uh, long-faced, uh, miserable individual as a Christian. Uh, but the folks that I've known that have been filled with the Spirit of God, uh, even though they went through troubles and trials, uh, whenever that Spirit began to move within their souls, uh, the joy bells of heaven begin to ring. Uh, and they can begin to rejoice in what God has done for them uh, and the promises of the Lord. Uh, and they can shout the victory if nobody else wants to shout it. Uh, and it's all because God is able uh, that come in our life through that fresh oil, uh, that fresh anointing of His Spirit, and bring the joy of the Lord alive. I remember reading years ago about a young convert got saved. Man, he was on fire for God. He was rejoicing all the time. And somebody in the old church said, you're something wrong with you, boy. You need to go down here to the doctor of religion and have a talk with him. Yeah. You don't yeah. see me. I've been saved for 75 years and I ain't carrying on the way you carry <laughs> on. You need to go down and see old doctor religion. He went down and seen old doctor religion. Doctor religion examined him, asked him a few questions. I and he said, well, son, I don't see any reason you can't live, uh, have a long life as a Christian, uh, uh, but you're going to have to learn to be miserable and lose that joy somewhere along the way. <laughs> Isn't that about the way it works? Yeah. Yeah. Somebody gets saved. Uh, somebody really yields their life that God brought out of the depth of the power of sin. Uh, God saves them, born again, applies the blood, writes their name down uh, in the book of life. Uh, my goodness, touches them with that Holy Spirit. Uh, and all of a sudden, they begin to go crazy. Uh, my, we thought they, when they were crazy when they were out on the drugs. Uh, we thought they were crazy when they were drinking. Uh, we thought they were crazy uh, when they were doing the things of that world. Uh, and now half the church looks at them uh, and says they don't have to act like that. Uh, well, the folks that say that ought to get a mirror uh, and look at them and see what they're doing for God. Yeah. I'm just telling you, folks, yeah. if we get the all the Holy Ghost yeah. in the place, the world will set up and take notice. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Good preacher. You know, David Wilkerson was Pentecostal. David Wilkerson's dad was a pastor. He was Pentecostal. David Wilkerson's grandpa was an evangelist in a Pentecostal movement. And dad kind of got comfortable in the church that he was pastor, the big Pentecostal church. And he got pretty comfortable in it. And he just kind of going with the flow of the church. So one day he made this mistake of asking his dad, grandpa, to preach that night. And he yeah. said that night, here come grandpa in the church, had on a little pair of boots. <laughs> so he had a little bit of mud on him, or who knows whatever else. So he walked up to the front of the church, took the boots off, set them on the altar. He said he got up behind the pulpit, began to talk to him about the joy of the Lord. He said, you know what made the Pentecostal church such a growing movement? Is it God's people filled with the Spirit of God had joy? Yeah. He said, you folks get out. I mean, there's bankers, there's lawyers, there's Indian chiefs in that congregation. David Wilkerson, dad, sitting there all the time thinking, oh, Lord, I'm going to get kicked out tonight because of what Grandpa's doing. He said, get up out of the seat. They finally stood up. He said, everybody start singing victory in Jesus. So they started singing victory in Jesus. So then he said, follow me, and they began to march around the church. As they marched around the church, they began to get into it. They began to sing like they really meant it. Victory in Jesus. They began to shout. They began to holler. They began to dance in the church. And he said that went on that night for a couple of hours of just rejoicing in the Spirit. He said the next day, his daddy went to the bank. And when he went to the bank, the bank president that lived next door to the church, Church, said, I want to talk to you, Mr. Wilkerson, in my office.
us. We thought, oh no, there it goes. We're never going to be able to borrow any money again to do anything in the church the way they carried on their last night. He said, the old bank president we got him in there. He said, you know, Brother Wilkson, I've, I've been living next to that church for the last 15 years, the last eight of them you pastored. He said, I never heard anything go on over there like went on over there last night. He said, but last night we were sitting out on the porch and that carried on whatever was going on over there and I heard people shouting and looked through the window and see folks are dancing around that floor to go around the church. And he said, I'll tell you what, me and my wife had planned to be there Sunday morning. Yeah. Yeah. And then yeah. the world out. Yeah. They got attracted by something dead. Yeah. Anything that yeah. dead stinks. Yeah. It just lays there. It doesn't yeah. have any movement. It doesn't have any life about it. Yeah. Lord, I tell you, if you'll get the grace anointing yeah. uh, by the blessing of the Holy Ghost, uh, there'll be some life. Yeah. Uh, there'll be some joy. There'll be some victory. Yeah. Yeah. My goodness gracious, come to my church. I've often said, how many times do you ever go to the house of God, have a dead service, and go home, get on the phone with your best friend, said, man, I wish you was there tonight. We had the deadest service. <laughs> <laughs> wish you were there. Now, well, some people might go for that. But oh, I'm telling you, folks, I'm going to go somewhere I want some life. Amen. Amen. Right. Amen. Amen. I hit the groundhog this morning. On the way to town, he's dead. <laughs> <laughs> he ran out and rode the wrong time. His number was up. He's in groundhog heaven tonight. <laughs> but he ain't got no life. Yeah, he just laying around the road waiting for something to happen. And that's the way a lot of the church is. Yeah. They ain't had a move in the Spirit of God on their soul for so long. Right. They don't know what the world's going. They, the Holy yeah. Ghost comes, they get mad, they get embarrassed, yeah. they get indignant. Yeah. They want to run somebody off because they can't feel like them. Yeah. I, well, my goodness, folks, if we'll just pray and seek the face of God, yeah. Yeah. we can have some fresh oil yeah. that'll lift us up and strengthen us and help us out. Then we can walk with God for the joy out of it. Yeah. Yeah. Just the joy. I Years ago, I, I'm going to have to be careful. I'll get you too late and the soup will get cold. <laughs> Years ago, preaching revival, my ex-brother-in-law, he, he failed to get back and get any fresh oil. Now he's an ex-brother-in-law. He was a great preacher. He was preaching revival in a little church up, uh, and they've been even in Highland County, Plum Run. There's a few of the folks from, uh, from up in, in Pike and Ross know where it's at. But at that time, just a little church up a hollow. They had uh, 15, 20 people. I was young and dumb, just, man, I tell you, just, I, I'd go anywhere to preach. And we went up there that night, and, and, and we preached that night. And boy, I mean to tell you, I, I walked in. They had a woman pastor, and she said, got a lot of game up a holler tonight. That means you're sinners in the house. <laughs> and I said, well, I ain't never preached to no sinners before. I've always preached to church. She said, you're going to preach tonight. Well, we had about an hour and a half older service. So there was about seven people came that night. They knew one or two come. We'd pray 15, 20 minutes, they'd get through. Another one or two would come. It was about an hour and a half. We left there that night. My brother-in-law said, go back to Circleville. He was in Circleville Bible College. to said, get some clothes. So we headed for Circleville. I preached that night, and the Holy Ghost had came, and that fresh oil began to flow. It never quit when the older service was over. We got that Honda headed on up the road to Circleville Bible College. The oil was flowing, I'm telling you. The time we got to Circleville, I'm hanging out the window, shouting praise to the God. I mean, up from the Spirit of the Lord. And my brother-in-law said, shut up, you dummy. You'll get us arrested. I said, don't make no difference. I'm praising the Lord. You know what it was all around? It was all oil was flowing. Wouldn't it be something if God killed Grandma and Grandma shout? Thank God for the glory of God. Wouldn't it be something if the night that you had that blessing for a long time the price all would come. Amen. 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 Oh, you just get blessed till you can't endure it anymore. Amen. Just a fresh old source of joy. And it's also an attractive and a fragrance to it. Yeah. There's something about the oil of the Holy Spirit that people find it very difficult to, to reject. I worked with a guy, when I worked for the county, I worked the uh, last 15 years or so on the Great Hall crew. And the fellow that ran the Great Hall, he liked dogs. Now, I like dogs as long as they stay well. <laughs> I don't need their 
mess around the house. I ain't gonna take none of them shopping and throw a kid out of the buggy and put the dog in. Right. Amen. But he liked dogs. You know, he had a couple of Rottweilers and, and a, a dog with pincher there one time. And every morning before he'd come to work, he'd go out there and he'd flap around on them old dogs. He'd hit them so hard you'd think he'd knock them out. Didn't they have frame in their head? You couldn't hurt them. <laughs> and so he'd come to work and he'd have that dog all over his pants and all over his hand. I, and the first time we'd pull up to a house and he'd crawl out of that great hall, if there was a dog around, he'd run to him. <laughs> so I'd smell all them dogs. Yeah. He'd come over, and he'd stay way away from me. But he'd come over there, boy, he'd sniff around on him, jump up on him, won't be petted, because he smelled like a dog. <laughs> well, there's something about the, the fragrance of the Holy Spirit. Whenever the Lord Jesus Amen. was born into this world, one of the things that, that they came and they gave them to the Lord Jesus Christ was a fragrance. Uh, when they brought him the, the myrrh and all that onto him for his birth, there was a fragrance about that. And from Amen. that moment on, Jesus drew people everywhere he went. Amen. 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 And there's a fragrance about the presence yeah. of the Holy Spirit. Amen. That can draw you now. He's called a comforter in the Word of God. He can make you very uncomfortable as a lost person. That's his job. That's his job. Right? Yeah. You know, every church that I've ever pastored, I wanted people to feel like they were welcome, but I didn't want the sinner to feel comfortable. Amen. 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 He ought to be able to come and uh, enjoy having people say, "We're glad to have you here." I, an old church that never uh, wanted to invite anybody or. Or tell them it's glad they showed up. Well, who want to go to that dead horse? Yeah. But you get somewhere where folks are friendly and the Holy Spirit's flowing. There's a fragrance of that Holy Spirit Amen. that'll just tell people, if I can get to Jesus, I can have that in there. Amen. 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 Now, when you live in the world, you smell like the world. Yeah. Right. When you live with Christ, you ought to smell like Christ. Amen. Amen. The fragrance of, of, of the Lord Jesus Christ about that life that have just been attractive for people. There's also, uh, it's also there that fresh oil is for fellowship. It's there for fellowship. Whenever God first gave Moses the ingredients of the anointing oil, and I've got a good message on that. that I'll save that for after a while after you get done eating your soup. <laughs> but when God gave Moses the ingredients for, for the anointing oil, one of those, there was uh, either seven or nine ingredients in that, and one of those was cassia. Now, cassia is like a glue. It comes out of a plant or a tree, but it's like a glue. And, and they were to mix up all this anointing oil, and it's not to ever be put on a stranger. It can never be put on somebody that's not God's people. You know, the Holy Spirit won't fill people that don't belong to God. The Holy Spirit won't refresh people with himself that don't belong to God. Yeah. You know, we've, we've created this thing here in the last 40 or 50 years. We've got unsaved people getting full of the Holy Ghost. Yeah. I don't buy that for a minute. Amen. If you're not under the blood, the Holy Ghost is not going to come. Yeah. You first got to have the blood applied, and then the Spirit of God will come. But part of that was the cassia that, that they put in that anointing oil. Uh, and part of the, the high priest uh, um, thing, the way they brought him into the high priesthood, uh, they would anoint him. They didn't anoint him with a little jug, the little bottle. They didn't put a little drop on his yeah, head uh, and say, yeah. here you are. Uh, we're anointing you right now. Uh, with the oil. You're going to be a high priest. Though so they'd bring out about five gallons of it. And they'd bring him up there and they'd stand him up they lift it up and then dump it over his head. And for seven days, he could not get a bath. For seven days, he's sticky. And if you went up and throw your arms around the high priest and said, I love you, brother, you better mean it. Amen. Amen. Those are stuck with him and didn't get a bath. <laughs> There's just something about the Holy Spirit that will keep you in fellowship, Amen. first of all, with God. Amen. With God, Amen. it'll give you some stick em. Amen. Whenever you come on problems and trials, uh, fo folks tell me about a big revival going on somewhere been extended. Uh, I, I thought today the same ones that got saved or getting saved and it's the same one that got saved in last uh, year's revival. Uh, uh, they went to the baptizing and hold in. Uh, Tadpole said, there comes John. Uh, there comes Jerry. There comes Jim. 
uh, all of them were here last year, uh, but they quit and now they're getting baptized again. I tell you, folks, I believe uh, that the blood uh, and the Holy Ghost is able to keep you more than from yeah. Sunday night uh, to Wednesday. Yeah. I believe there's a holding power in the Spirit of God that if you really get the Spirit of God in your heart and you got saved today, you'll be around. Yeah. You say you eternal security preacher just for me. <laughs> Not for you at all. But I really believe man really gets saved. He really comes to know God. There's something that comes into the heart that casts in the Holy Spirit. That'll hold you fellowship and fellowship with God. And it'll hold you in fellowship with one another. Amen. Amen. Anybody here never been offended in church? Anybody just get saved before I came in? <laughs> That'd be a better idea. If you've been saved any length of time, you've had somebody say something to you intentionally or unintentionally to try to get you to throw up your hands and quit. My boy said, Dad, you should have wrote you ought to write a book. <laughs> I would, but I've intentionally remembered to forget most of that. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's right. If you don't, you won't make it. Amen. There's something about the cast of the Holy Spirit that though you don't approve of what people do, and there's folks I've found out over the years you're better off staying away from. Yeah. Because all they'll do is just badger and try to create hard feelings and, Amen. and difficulties in your soul. These people said, I'll make them shake my hand when you're no better than they are. Amen. You're just want, uh, giving a carnal response to a carnal response. Amen. That's all it amounts to. But, but I'm telling you, there's something about people that can do you wrong, but you don't have to hate them. You don't have to harbor a grudge against them. That, that you can just go on and serve God and honor God and stay in fellowship with God's people. If you get to fresh oil, I don't know go And then you know that you get fresh oil for healing. For healing. Whenever the man went down, was heading down from Jerusalem to Jericho, and he, he came across the man that had, uh, that had fell amongst thieves. And when the Samaritan came across him, the priest went by and the Levite went by. And all of a sudden, the Samaritan comes by. First thing he done for him when he was cleaning him up, he poured in oil. Yes, he did. And that was for healing. You're going to get hurt along the way. You're going to get wounded at times within your life. But there's healing in the Holy Spirit. Amen. I grew up uh, during, Bob and I grew up during the Vietnam era. Some of you other guys did too. Neither of us uh, got drafted. Back then they had, what was it, three, uh, three lotteries you went through. And if your number didn't come up to a certain point in that lottery, uh, that uh, you, you weren't drafted. We never got drafted, but I knew a lot of boys that did. And I knew several of them. And in Vietnam were wounded. I knew a couple of them were killed in that war. And you know, when they would get wounded, they would send them back. And they would do everything they could to bring healing to them because a wounded soldier is no good to anybody. Right. He's got to be healed up. And a wounded Christian is really not any good to anybody. A wounded Christian will just drag himself around not be able to help anybody else because he can't help himself. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Bob, Bob and I are cousins. We, he's a year older than I am. We hunted together uh, for years and years and years. But one of us always had a little bigger. <coughs> and I had a little bigger when I was a kid named McQueenie. And I remember one day we lived on a little dirt road. Nobody tied a dog up back then. And I was in the house one day. We heard a car come a flying up the road. It was Papa Tuesday, he was on lead foot himself. And then I heard a, a kapow, a yelp, and somebody hollered at me on the screen door said, that ain't your dog just got hit. And I got out of the house just in time, I seen her dragging herself up to the Papa Tuesday's old garage. And I went up there and hit a, a pile of cross ties, and there was a little space in between a couple of them, and Queenie had drug herself in there and laid down. And I'd, I'd had her since she was a pup. I had her, got her when she was 
just a, a few weeks old when she was about five months old. Uh, I was out on Frank Kenny's place with her, walking around the woods, jumped a rabbit out of the rabbit bed. I picked her up and put her nose down in that, and she ran a lap and a half on that rabbit. And I was just like a proud dad. <laughs> five months old pup. I really didn't have much in life to be proud of, but I was proud of her, and I loved that little dog. And I reached down there to pick her up, put my hands underneath of her, and as soon as I started to lift her, she snapped at me. Yeah. Yeah. Wounded creatures or people snap. Yeah. 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 They'll bite. Yeah. Now, she was a gentle, slow thing. She never offered all the time that I'd ever had her to bite, but when she was hurt, she would. And you can be around the best Christians when they're going through some very difficult times in their life and they're wounded and they're torn apart. And you can try to do the very best you can. You see, I'm going to take her, uh, and as a matter of fact, I did end up taking her to the uh, to a, a dog doctor, whatever they call them, vet. And she ended up dying anyway. But you can do the very best you can to help people when they're hurt. Yep. And a lot of times they'll bite yeah. and they'll snap. Yeah. You say, not me, preacher. Well, you're a better person than I. Amen. It hurts me deep enough, I'll bite. Right. The bad thing is we normally bite the people who are closest to yeah. Yeah. Right. Husbands and wife can attest to that. But there's something about when God comes with the fresh oil. They pour the oil of the Holy Spirit, a fresh back into the heart. It brings that healing within the life. Praise the Lord. I, I really believe, folks, God wants to send us revival. I believe all my heart. I felt like God spoke to me years ago and said there would be a very quick move of the Holy Spirit and then Jesus would come. You can say, I don't believe that. Doesn't matter. He told me. He didn't tell you. <laughs> Amen. And I believe it was God talking to me. And I've yet, not yet seen that quick moving of the Holy Spirit that he promised me. I've seen it seemingly going down, 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 more and more. But I believe even what God did for us in the election, the last general election, now I'll probably get somebody mad here and just need a little oil. <laughs> but, but we've been in awful shape tonight as a Christian people and we haven't got the president of God Amen. I believe that from my heart but he never put him in there to solve all of our problems he put him in there to give us a space for revival that's right and if we don't have that, and we don't seek the face of God, if we don't seek the fresh oil, that's evil. God's able to send down that will refresh the church. There's a, there's a name for the church today, and it's tired. Yeah. It's tired. Yeah. I don't know about you, I'm tired. Right. I'm tired of going preaching to people that don't want to hear what you have to Amen. say. Amen. I'm tired of doing my best and not seeing anything happen to the word of God. And I know that the thing, one thing that we need more than anything tonight is fresh oil. Amen. 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 I'm going to have these fellows come. I know you enjoy it, but I, you don't get to hear that. Dobro, and banjo, and nobody even played the mandolin. <laughs> if I could, I would. <laughs> Amen. And the old bass over there. Amen. But I'm telling you tonight, I believe the message for tonight. I believe this is one of the on my heart. Yes. This fresh oil. Amen. Yes. If you're here and unsaved, you need to get ready. Mm -hmm. the rapture can take place anytime. Yeah. But if you're here tonight and you've just been dry, and the high water mark of your salvation experience is up here and you're down here, Amen. then you need fresh oil. Amen. Amen. You say, how do I get it? Well, first of all, David was confident going to get it. He said, I shall be a Amen. Yeah. It might take me a little while, but I'm going to get it. And that's one thing. We're a five-minute people. If I spend over five that's minutes right. of prayer, I'm done. Yeah. It didn't come. must not have been the will of God. No, start seeking it. 
Start hungering and thirsting for it. Start asking God to come and God to fill. If he doesn't fill tonight, seek tomorrow. If he doesn't fill tomorrow, seek the next day. And seek it not only as individual, but as a church. If God will come and flood this place with the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Because he'll make Jesus so real that you'll be refreshed and sinners will be drawn. And God will be glorified. Amen. Anybody hungry? Anybody need fresh water tonight? Yeah. Amen. If you if you need it, come see him tonight. God wants to give it up to you from my heart. Would you stand with us for a moment as they say? We just find the word. Lord, I know. Shut 